Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and the sculpting part of my rooster is all done. I got the epoxy clay on there. As a matter of fact, I just now finished up the eyebrows and I just now stuck my finger in one of them. It's still wet. Oops, I might have to fix that one. Um, <laughs> I didn't know roosters have eyebrows, did you? In my last video, I showed you how I created my rooster portrait I'm calling it uh, using some wet clay on the inside and then creating a, a shell out of plaster cloth. You didn't get to see quite all of that part because my brand new puppy kind of interrupted me but you got enough of the gist to be able to see how it was done. So that was where that video ended. Now the clay has been taken out of the, the rooster. Uh, it ended up being just a shell of plaster cloth and I started adding the epoxy clay to the outside. Now I also want to mention, um, just in case you're getting distracted by the spots on my face, I've got some cat scratches. My, my cat just happened to need really badly to go in a particular way really, really fast and my face got in the way. It was not entirely his fault, although I am kind of holding a grudge. <laughs> But, but no great harm done. I almost um, decided to wait and do this video a couple of days later so you couldn't see him quite so much. But I really wanted to show you my rooster because I've been working on him really hard and I wanted to let you know how he came out. Now you don't have to use epoxy clay if you don't want to. You can create something very much like this using air dry clay, either a commercial product or the one that you can find a recipe for out on my website. You can get almost as much uh, detail as I did with the air dry clay as I did with the Magic Sculpt. It's an epoxy resin. I happen to have some in the house. It comes in two parts. I'm just going to hold up one because I've only got one hand left. Um, I happen to like this brand, but I've used the epoxy sculpt and there's a smooth on product that I really like too. I think my favorite though, now that I've I've had a chance to, to really play with it. I think I like the Magic Sculpt best, um, just a personal preference. Now you've also noticed that I am not in my studio again. I'm, I'm still here in my living room because it's really close to the kitchen, which is where my brand new puppy is. Now I know a lot of people really wanted to see him in the last video and I didn't show him then, but here he is now. This is TJ. Now once the plaster cloth was dry on this fellow, the, the first thing I had to do of course was take the clay out from inside and that took a while. Kind of a long time actually. I just went and sat down and started pulling it out. Uh, wasn't easy. You have to make sure, really sure, that you do that soon. If you're going to make something like I did with a plaster cloth shell over wet clay and then put something on top of that like I'm doing, you have to get that wet clay out of there before it gets hard or you'll never get it out. I wanted to leave the, the hole in the bottom because it allowed me to get my hand in there uh, so that I could support the plaster cloth. There's only two layers. It's very thin and it's not very sturdy, but it does add just enough support for the epoxy sculpt so I didn't have to use very much. I could put on a really, really thin layer and, um, and it's still strong enough. But I did want to support it from the inside so I didn't put the, the bottom on. It's just a piece of cardboard that I, I stuck on with more epoxy clay, but I did that at the very, very end. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with epoxy clays or not. Um, this is just Magic Sculpt. It comes in two different parts. You have to keep the two parts separate until you're ready to use them. And then you use a gloved hand, one hand in the, you know, in the resin part and one hand the different hand in the hardener part so that you don't mix them up inside of your tubs. <laughs> because if you did that, you'd end up with little hard lumps in it the next time you go to use it. So keep them separate until you're ready. Mix it up as thoroughly as you can until you can't see any um, difference in the two colors. It's all one color. You'll be able to tell. Mix it as long as you possibly can because that, that really makes a big difference. And you want to use gloves. I know people say that you don't have to but you do. If you're not sure why I'm telling you that because it says it's non-toxic, so why would you need gloves? Look up acquired epoxy sensitivity. It's not a nice thing. <laughs> you don't want it, believe me. Um, I don't have it because I always use gloves. In fact, I use kind of a lot of gloves because unfortunately I didn't have enough sense to put some masking tape on the end of my sculpting tool. This end I wasn't actually using. It's really, really sharp. And I, it, I kept using it like this and it kept 
cutting into the gloves and I ended up with shredded gloves and it didn't occur to me to put masking tape on there until I was all done. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, one other thing I want to tell you about the epoxy clay, though. A lot of people have, have, have asked me if I'd be able to put this outside because epoxy clays of any brand is waterproof. And so if I had done this correctly, I would be able to put him outside. But you want to do it... Um, you, you want to have that in mind before you get started. I did that with the squirrel. I covered it with a really, really thin layer of epoxy clay first, trying to cover up absolutely all of it. I don't have a plaster cloth shell in the squirrel. I used the crumpled aluminum foil instead, so I didn't have to take it out. But I did, I still didn't want water in there. I didn't want a whole puddle of water on the inside of the sculpture. And even a pinhole is going to let water in. So I put a really thin layer over it. I tried to make sure that there weren't any pinholes. And then I went ahead and added the fur layer as a second layer. Just to make sure that there was enough epoxy on top of it. Without using a whole lot. It's still a very, very thin um, outside shell of the epoxy clay. It's kind of expensive. You don't want to use a whole bunch. But if you put two layers on there, you know for sure that there isn't going to be any water getting in at any time. Squirrel has been outside for, I think, four years now, Minnesota, summer, winter, and there's no change. He hasn't been harmed at all. This guy cannot go outside. Because I didn't do that, I only put the, the final texture layer on there. There are uh, little parts here where the water would get in. The plaster cloth would soften. Plaster cloth really absorbs water. This, this would end up full of water, literally full of water. Then it would freeze. Water expands when it freezes and this thing would just pop apart. So this guy's not going outside, but if you do yours right, you could put him outside if you want to. Even though for most of this, I, I started out at the top and work my way down. But I did start out by filling in the the back end of his throat. Up, and it was going to be really fragile because there was nothing behind it. There was no plaster cloth uh, underneath the clay. So I had to do that first. I went ahead and let that cure for about an hour. I went back um, and put more epoxy clay behind it just to make sure that it was going to be strong enough. And then after that, I put a very thin layer of the uh, Magic Sculpt over the comb. I wanted, I wanted to have a nice texture on the comb and the thing I ended up using was a silicone uh, washcloth. And just for a little bit of extra um, dips, I used a, uh, a, the ends of a brush. I, I just happened to like the way that looked and so that's what I ended up using. After that cured, I went back and put some details on the comb and then I just kept working downward. It was a little bit tricky getting the eyes uh, so that they would look pretty much the same on both sides. I textured the, the feathery parts with uh, the end of my sculpting tool. I could just kept moving downward and I would mix up a fairly small amount of the epoxy clay at a time, fill out as much as I could with that, and then let it harden. So you do want to have nice um, cured areas or dry areas that, to hold on to so that you don't mess up something that you already spend a whole lot of time uh, working on. I kept moving downward. I, I put the same texture on the wattles and the little weird you know, ear things. Um, I put feathers on everything else. I didn't get carried away trying to make museum quality type um, textures or anything because that's, that's, you know, it's for my house. I'm not trying to get that carried away, but it, it, I think it worked pretty well. The last two things that I sculpted were actually the most fun. I, I, the first one was the tongue. I didn't know what a chicken tongue looked like until I went out on the internet and looked up some photographs of them. Turns out they're pointy with a valley right down the middle. I created one in my hand and then stuck it into his mouth. That was the tricky part because getting it to actually uh, stick down way at the back of the, of the mouth, down by the throat, it, was, it wasn't easy. But once it was done, I think it turned out really nice. And the last thing that I sculpted were his eyebrows. I had no idea that 
roosters would have eyebrows. I mean, uh, it's just one of those things that had never occurred to me, but they do. And every single breed seems to have a, uh, a different way of doing it. Some of them have uh, pointy feathers like these kind of sticking up. Some of, them, some of them have larger feathers that lay down flatter, but they all do seem to have um, eyebrows. I picked the ones that I happened to like and, and the ones that I thought would be the easiest to do. Uh, I used my brush and just kind of chopped off some of those, um, I, I don't know what those are, nylon maybe? I don't know, they're really pretty stiff. Um, they're just the hairs and I stuck them into some of the epoxy sculpt. Um, they're not exactly the same on both sides because it took a little while to get used to the idea. But I'm still really happy with the way they look. And once it's painted, those won't actually stand out, I don't think, as being, um, you know, parts of a brush. I think it really will look like feathers. Hopefully, we'll keep our fingers crossed. And then in the end, I just cut a, a piece of cardboard that was the right shape for the bottom and added that to it. I still do need to do a little bit of work on the bottom, actually. Uh, it's not quite finished, but I thought it would be finished enough so that I could show you guys how it looks. I'll, I'll finish that as soon as the video is up. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is there's a couple of places where I really want to take some really fine sandpaper, like right here on the, um, the, the beak. I could probably smooth that off a little bit better by adding a little bit more of the epoxy clay. But it would just be easier to take some really fine sandpaper and, and take care of that. So that's what I'm going to do. Not very many places, just, just a teensy bit. Now, just in case that you don't want to use the epoxy clay because you don't happen to have some in the house like I did, uh, I will put links down below for the recipes for the air dry clay and for the, um, the original paper mache clay recipe down below. You can use whichever one you happen to enjoy using most. If you would like to use the epoxy sculpt, but you don't want to go to all the trouble of making the, the clay model first and then putting the plaster cloth over it, I'll put a link to the first squirrel video so that you can see how that's done using crumpled aluminum foil. And you're just sculpting with the foil basically instead of the clay. And you don't need to use the plaster cloth over it because, because it's strong enough without it. I'm going to do a little bit of puppy training here in the next few days, but I do hope to get my rooster uh, painted and finished, maybe, hopefully by maybe the beginning of next week. So be sure to watch for that video. And in the meantime, go make something and then come visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.